Hello, this is Zeke777, and welcome back to Simply Magic 2. It's episode 17, if I recall correctly. We are down here in our basement. I just wanted to show a couple of the changes I'd made between episodes. Um, I started putting in more walls. Uh, I haven't decided what I'm going to put down this little area here. Um, I've got this area. This is the auto crafting like you saw before. Um, I'll probably finish that wall, but just kind of wanted to get the basic idea here. Um, then over here in the main auto crafting area, um, I made one important change. I figured out what my problem was last time, and my problem was vanilla. Uh, basically, hoppers, uh, if they're stacked vertically, um, and it's kind of how a lot of uh, vanilla item stores work, if they're stacked vertically, they'll tend to drop down almost instantly. In fact, if you have a row of hoppers going across, and then a couple hoppers below them, it'll tend to take it downwards before it'll take it going across. Um, kind of had to work around some things with that, with the uh, uh, smelting system over there. But, so, how do we fix that? Well, this lovely pink block here is living wood funnels. These are from Natural Pledge, um, and basically they're the same as a hopper, except they only have a single slot. In fact, they don't even have a uh, user interface here. No GUI. Um, so they have the single slot, and what that does is it allows it to actually work how a hopper, you know, should. Um, my problem that I had was it was kind of stacking up the items, so if I come down here, um, oh yeah, I made some decorations down here as well. Um, so yeah, it was stacking up the items in the bottom hopper, and what that would end up doing is it'd kind of take them as uh, it felt. So if items stacked up, then it may have items in the second slot of my hopper uh, here stacking up and start taking these ones. So take this from the first item that came in, second item would land here, third item would land back in this first slot, and everything would get messed up. Um, I had tried playing with like switching around the orders and I couldn't get it to work with just using regular vanilla hoppers. So living wood funnels, these guys work perfectly. Um, and therefore I also switched this from making hoppers to making living wood funnels. Um, they're actually not too expensive to make once you have the materials. Um, it's living wood and the hard part is the circuit tree planks. Um, so the planks themselves, oh sorry I don't actually have stairs to get out of here. Um, the planks and circuitry, uh, the way it works is Natural Pledge is kind of a complicated mod. Uh, there's a lot of things in it. Um, I have barely touched the surface of it, but I think I put these up in my Batania chest. Um, yeah, so you have to use the terrestrial focus to turn uh, basically regular saplings. You plant them next to a pure daisy, turns them into iridescent saplings, um, and then you can use those to make circuitry saplings. However, to make circuitry saplings, you need awakened or you need soul roots. So if we click that, need spell infusion. As you can see, I did quite a bit off camera. This is a pretty cheap recipe. Uh, you know, just diamonds, cheap. Um, if we go back here, the way this works is you have to set up your uh, I'm not really sure what to call it, kind of affinity. So let's take our uh, emblem here. You have to make this, and when you equip it, it'll kind of bind you to that. Uh, Greek god, uh, the is it the Aesir or something is how it's pronounced. So let's take living wood and a terrestrial focus. So the way you channel your newfound priestly powers is by using this thing. So shift right click, you can cycle between. And so let's toss living wood on the ground, right click it, and it turns it into a soul root. Um, pretty simple. It's just basically just needed to do lots of crafting off camera. Um, yeah, pretty basic. Uh, once you've got one, then you can just make lots of others. Which brings us to the next plan. Today, uh, we're going to get started. We're not going to finish it. I'm, I've kind of been going a little long in my episode, so I want to keep kind of keep this one a little shorter. We're going to start on a new building. Um, I want to have a, a kind of botany um, building. Not Batania, botany. Um, so this is kind of the main hall here. We've got the blood magic over there. I have to do something about that structure up there. Um, but I want another building. And this one's going to be pretty good sized, probably actually about on the same scale as the main hall here. Um, yeah, I've been kind of working on designing how I want it to look. Um, I'm not actually sure where I'll put it now that I think about it. Probably, I guess, over in that patch would work. Um, well, I do kind of want it closer. Yeah, so let's go ahead and get the materials that we're going to need and get started on that. Another of the issues that I encountered uh, kind of at the end of the last episode, uh, my blood altar, if you recall, was not filling up. 
And the reason for that was, I'm not quite sure why, but for some reason the witches that I had underneath here would stop healing themselves. Um, I know it was that they stopped healing themselves instead of them just despawning, because I came in here at one point and uh, found a couple glass bottles on the ground. Um, which is kind of annoying. Um, anyway, I did some exploring, and somewhere way down here... Doomlike Dungeon. This place here, it's kind of like a roguelike dungeon, only it's a bit more compact. Uh, well, still sprawling, but the rooms are a lot tighter. Uh, tons more spawners. Uh, also, important to note, is lots of different types of spawners. Go away. I don't remember putting zombies down there. Um, so, I found a witch spawner. Uh, this is still a regular vanilla style spawner, so you do have to be close to make it actually work. But, basically, I just put it down here. Uh, if I'm nearby, it'll start spawning them. Um, I did actually then look into... Oh, that was really quick. Zero frames a second. Anyway. Um, yeah, basically... You have to be nearby for them to start spawning them, um, but they do, you know, still kind of heal themselves a little bit. Um, so it fills up this really quickly. Um, I did actually then start investing a little bit into uh, soul shards, and I'm kind of only justifying it down here. I haven't put it in yet. Um, I'm only justifying using it because really these guys shouldn't be despawning in the first place. So it's kind of unfair because it's not really the proper game mechanics. Um, so. Basically, I'm going to use a Soul Shards Witch Spawner down here, so I don't have to actually be present for it to spawn them. There we go. Not sure why my frame rate is all over the map today. Um, I did change it from uh, limiting it to 40 to letting it be unlimited, so I guess it does kind of fluctuate then. Um, but yeah, basically I'll be putting the Soul Shards Witch Spawner down here. Oh, no more rain. That way it'll just kind of keep them down here at all times. Same as they should have been anyway. So that'll keep this nice and full. Um, I did actually end up draining my Master Blood Orb. So I filled that up and uh, we've got this all working again. So that's really nice. I still haven't done too much decoration around here. But anyway, um, let's go ahead and probably start clearing out some trees over there and figuring out how we want to build this building. So we are going to go ahead and start by chopping down every tree we can find. Um, I really don't actually need this much wood. But that's okay. Um, it's much nicer having this uh, for clearing everything, as opposed to, if you remember, with the uh, blood altar over there. That was a little bit painful. Um, but yeah, I'm going to go ahead and kind of clear up this whole little... Uh, it really kills my frame rate. Going to go ahead and clear up this little hill here. Uh, I think on top of the hill is kind of a good thing. I might actually lower the hill a little bit. Um, but yeah, I'll go ahead and chop these down. Uh, I should probably be using this in the meantime um, to uh, <laughs> root my saplings so I don't have to deal with them growing again. Especially because I think they, I think I bone meal them when I get close to them with the uh, with this necklace on. Uh, I think should be a sapling over here. I bet if I get close, they'll start bone mealing it. Yeah, so that's not good. But anyway, like I said can go ahead and clear this area. You know, there's definitely something to be said for uh, tearing down a forest in order to build a tree farm. But uh, I think uh, I think there should be pretty good results here. Um, did I happen to mention just how big of an area I'm planning on doing here? Um, basically, it's going to be that way, which is 48 blocks that way, 48, 48, and 48 this way. I haven't finished this one yet. Um, it should be coming along. I'm kind of uh, almost done clearing the trees as well as... I had to lower this dirt by, I think it was two blocks, which doesn't seem like much, but it's actually quite a lot. Let's break you. And I forgot to probably keep getting rid of these saplings. There we go. So I'm going to finish clearing the trees and lay out the rest of this foundation, and I'll be right back. So I'm going to be using a similar architectural style as my other buildings, um, basically just having this... Uh, chiseled stone here as my main foundation block. Um, I do need to actually finish the uh, blood magic place, just because that it's currently still like this, where it's just a sheer vertical line here. Um, I do want to have it all sloped like the main building, um, but yeah, that's kind of the idea. Um, this place, like I said, is going to be a, a botany uh, building, campus thing, yeah. Um, the idea being that 
I don't have a tree farm. Uh, I'd like to have a tree farm. I also want to at least get um, probably the, if I can remember the name of it, the uh, thing for Britannia, Jaded Amaranthus. So that building, or that uh, flower, basically creates uh, more Britannia flowers. What is her? Oh. You. You can go up there. And you gonna fall? Aw oh, man, he landed. Oh well. He's stuck up there now. Uh, yeah, so the Jade Amaranthus is probably going to be one of the things I'll put in here as well. Um, basically, it will create the Batania flowers, which I'll be needing, honestly, not so much for the Batania flowers themselves, uh, like I don't need it for the petals, but I will need it for making floating variants of flowers. Each of those needs an actual real flower for that, um, or at least a real... Uh, Talking and doing at the same time is difficult. Uh, it needs an actual flower to be able to do the floating variants. So one of the reasons why I've had just a lot of things just sitting on the ground, uh, just planted on dirt or grass or whatever, it's mostly because I really don't have an actually good source of the mystical flowers themselves. I can go around and kind of pick them, but I haven't actually made the jade amaranth itself, which will basically just do it all automatically for me. So let's see. One, two, three. One, two, three. One, two, one, one, two, two, one, two, three, four. That should be even with that one. Yeah. So the idea here is let's kind of go up high here. These mark here, these marks are for the middle circle. Then I'm gonna have outer circles here with a line about right here. So this is gonna be a nice big long thing. If you've ever seen pictures of like um, botanical gardens like the in Washington DC there's basically a big kind of glass building glass and steel with a kind of a rounded top so it'll have nice rounded edges all everywhere with kind of these spheres in the uh, sides so yeah there'll be four sides then one middle area here which I'm planning on planting a tree so that's that's start my tree right there that single log I had some leaves on it but they decayed because why not um, yeah, so I'm going to have probably the individual tree farms are going to be here on these outer circles. Uh, this way I can kind of do maybe different ones for each type of tree. Um, I don't need too many different things actually automatically farmed. Mostly, ironically, the biggest user of wood for this that I have is going to be the tree in the middle here. Um, basically, yeah, I don't have a whole lot of use for wood at the moment, so I kind of wanted to make a use for wood. That being a huge tree. Um, I have done one of these before um, on a server I was on years back at this point, but I uh, wanted to kind of make a different style of tree, almost kind of like a bonsai style tree where it's kind of short and really wide. Um, I plan on it being huge, uh, to be honest. Like for instance, the middle area here I think is a radius 32, maybe 20 some. I think actually this radius of this circle matches the middle circle of the main building there. I'm planning on having the tree probably something like this radius, so maybe a bit bigger. I'll have a nice little walkway around here, and then giant tree up the middle. So I think it should be pretty interesting, but uh, in the meantime, let me go ahead and build a bit more of the foundation here, and get back when I have something probably leveled off and some grass everywhere. So one of the things about mod Minecraft that's kind of always been to me is an earned creative mode. Um, as you can see, I mean, I already have, you know, creative flight, that's no big deal at this point. Um, I'm essentially invulnerable with my armor. Just one down here. There we go. Basically invulnerable with the armor. Um, next up would be building. Um, in fact, that's the main part for me, is that if you're going to have, you know, you know, all these ways to do everything, unlimited all this, unlimited that, wouldn't it be great if uh, there wasn't a way to run out of blocks, if you could just keep building? Um, so, we're in the process of doing that. Uh, it may not look like it at the moment, but right now we're in that uh, Doom-like dungeon that I mentioned before. Um, I'm here to grab this, Skeleton Spawner. Now, specifically from this dungeon, I do have the a roguelike dungeon much closer to my base, but this guy here, where are you, right up there? Okay. Uh, this guy here is a specifically vanilla spawner. The roguelike dungeons tend to have their own system, and with that, it's kind of annoying because then they start spawning with uh, armor and all that. But more importantly, is that with the roguelike dungeon skeletons, 
they're not vanilla skeletons. Uh, they don't turn into withers if they're in the nether, or wither skeletons. Uh, this has a vanilla spawner, however. I couldn't be bothered to find an actual uh, you know, dungeon. Um, with a vanilla spawner, if you move that to the nether, there's like a 50 or 75% chance of it being a wither skeleton instead of a regular skeleton. So basically, we're flying back home at the moment here, I need wither skeletons. The reason for that is the player interface by random things takes another star. So what is this you ask? This basically will allow me to set up automation at home to do whatever I want with my inventory. Uh, specifically, I would like it to keep a stack of smooth stone. If I have that kept in my inventory at all times, if it's of course going to automatically be you know, turned into smooth stone for my cobble works with all that set up, everything I've done so far. Um, I'll basically be able to set it to have any of the building materials I'd like just always be kept in stock. Uh, that way I can just essentially keep building. I was tired of running back and forth with uh, playing, placing down the foundation there as well as you know just general building. I mean this building here isn't even finished. I don't have a roof. I don't have any roofs. I have three different roofs here that are all missing. Oh, made it go to zero FPS. We'll be right back after this. There we go. Cool. Didn't uh, recognize my stop recording button. Anyway, so we're back at home now. So yeah, we need obsidian, we need another star. So I'm going to go ahead and set up a small little kind of wither skeleton spawning area in the nether here. It's pretty much the opposite of anything fancy. It's literally just I dug a square and way up high I put a spawner. It's actually probably out of range at the moment. Um, Basically, just a real quick setup. Spawn skeletons, determined weather. Well, have them spawn as weather skeletons, and then chop off their heads. Um, I made an elementary max in the last episode, or before the last episode, because these guys supposedly have a better chance of getting heads. Sweet, got one already. So I'm gonna sit here for a little bit. Probably get probably a dozen or so of these. I do have a couple other things I need uh, nether stars as well as beacons for. Uh, particularly, the blood altar needs that. So, I'm going to sit here for a bit, farm up these, and I'll probably figure out where I'm going to fight the wither. Well, I didn't get a dozen. I got seven. And at the same time, I managed to get seven gasters as well. Which is a little annoying that I was getting those just as much. Anyway, I didn't set up a very efficient system, so it's not a big deal. Um, so, we're going to be going with the vanilla method of farming the wither skeleton. Or farming the wither, which is you find a nice flat spot at the roof of the, uh, through, yeah, words, roof of the nether. Um, basically what it does is he can't break bedrock. So vanilla tricks, but a little modded fun in the way. So teleposer. These guys are awesome. Um, we can get two of these. There we go. Uh, two teleposers. We have one teleposition focus. I actually want to upgrade this one more time. Uh, these are basically just thrown under pearl in the uh, blood altar here. And this needs to be uh, tier 4, which is what we are right now, I think, anyway. Yeah. We're tier 4, not 5. So let me grab you out of here. Put you in there. That'll upgrade that. Right now, it would just teleport a single block at a time. If I do this, it'll do a 3x3. Three three. So once that's done, we can go ahead and pull it out. Should be... There we go. Cool. 3x3. Three three. So, yeah, we're going to kind of cheaty find a way to make the roof of the nether nice and flat for ourselves. Um, I dug around for a little bit, couldn't find it in the 30 seconds I was digging. So yeah, let's go in here and I will show you where I've set that up. At some point I'll make this look nice and fancy, but this is the same little island that I started on when I came into the nether. And just straight up, because why not? I'm a mage, I can fly. So all the way up, slowly. I might put an elevator or something in here. There's a zombie. Why is there a zombie? Go away. Ah, whatever. Fine. Um, yeah, so roof the nether. Nice and not flat. I didn't bring a button. Do I have a... Here we go. <laughs> need a button to actually use this thing. So let's throw one of you in here. Get a smooth stone out. Turn you into a button. Oh, should have put that back in. Oh, well. Um, place this here. And yeah, so let's place one right there. And let's do the other one. Let's go 
down a little bit. Don't know why they didn't break 3x3. Three three. Oh, well. Go, oh, break, break, break. Clear out a nice little area. That should work. So, clear area, clear area. Whatever. And let's place our second one just down here. Um, go ahead and right click our teleposition focus on that guy, place him in here, place a button on the side, I probably did that backwards, yeah. So break you, do it this direction, right click on you, place you in this one, shouldn't matter which, it probably does matter, like this. Do I not have LP? I have LP. I have a lot of LP. Oh, right. You. Bind to me. Put you in there. Press the button. And now I have bedrock sitting here. And less bedrock above here. So let's go ahead and break this. There we go. And let's raise you up. So, take you out. Break, break you. And let's kind of just stack up a little bit here. You can go back into here. Um, I do want to, however, move this guy now. Uh, basically, I'm just going to kind of move all the obsidian out of the way, and then I'll make a nice little, or er, not obsidian, bedrock. Just gonna move it out of the way, and then I will, once I have it all kind of collected, I'll uh, make a nice flat area for it. So I'm gonna do this to store. I'm also gonna use this to get above the roof of the nether. Um, I might, I haven't decided if I'm going to or not. In a single player world a while back, I made a uh, pretty good gas tier gold farm. Um, basically, just make a big spawning platform way up above. But uh, I haven't decided if I'm gonna do that here yet. I might, not sure. Um, don't really need it at the moment. <laughs> so, let's go ahead, take you out, bind you, place you in here again. It's a really uneven roof of the nether. Place you, teleport, and break things. Now, I think we might be at the actual roof now. We'll find out. Well, it's at least a flat level, flat area. If nothing else, I can just summon him here. I might just make some. Anyway, I'll uh, do a little bit off camera here, clearing things up and making a nice little area for myself. Alrighty, we should be good. Now let's place those here. And the three skeleton skulls, if it would let me. There we go. So he's going to go ahead and spawn, probably do a little bit of damage to me, but he should basically just start suffocating, and then I'll go ahead and kill him. Yep. So just sitting here, stuck. Cool. Yep. Really easy fight. Um, actually, goodbye. <laughs> I do like this spell. It didn't work on the uh, Ars Magica bosses, but it can definitely one-shot the wither. So, in fact, let's do that one more time. Um, let's wait for our mana to regen a little bit here, and we'll be right back with that. So, yeah, 18,713, plus whatever amount I get for the uh, damage modifiers I threw on there. But, uh, let's get ready for this guy again. Turn on our flight spell. Wait for him to blow up. There we go. Hello, Mr. Weather. Oh, goodbye, Mr. Weather. Um, so, cool. We have two nether stars. Um, let's go ahead and see what I need for the player interface. I need stable ender pearl and an ender chest. Let me go grab those materials and meet you back at base. Alrighty, we are almost done with this. So, player interface, we need stable ender pearl. Check. We need ender chest. Check. We need player interface. Cool. Now, I'm not sure if there's anything I need to do to, like, bind this to myself or anything. Um, but I think that'll work. Um, let's go ahead and place you... I want you kind of nearby so I can 
kind of modify it as needed. Um, you know, might as well just do it kind of here. I think that should work. Um, so, how do we use this thing? Um, it's kind of a question I have as well. So let's go ahead. I don't have output routing, but do I have any sitting over here? I do. One. Or four. That's fine. So let's go ahead and grab a filter. I don't have any of those. Of course I don't. Um, frame parts. And I need, let's see, four stick, four glass. There we go. Um, let's do this. You, 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 and you. I probably have these backwards. That's okay. Oh, sweet. Got it right. And let's go ahead and place this up here. So, I don't think it really matters which side I put it on. I'm assuming if I put it on the top, it'll be equipping my armor, which is kind of cool. I'm not sure if there's anything on the bottom as well, but uh, it should be really nice if it would do it into my ender chest. Um, let's do it right here. Why not? Uh, open you up, toss a... What direction is that? West. So in the west slot here, precise item filter. And let's say, you know, let's do that. And let's say I want 64. And I'm also going to do the same with just smooth stone. Um, I don't apparently have a, uh, a way to auto chisel things in this pack. I couldn't find it at least. So if I just put smooth stone in here, then I can just chisel it myself to whatever I want. So 64 of those as well. Um, I think that's it. Uh, let's see, go ahead and grab the hand of Ender, open you up, grab our node router, and let's link this up. Cool. Did that work? Seems to be working. Awesome. Oh, don't want to toss that. So that is filling up. I, I know I have, oh, yes, stack. Uh, smooth stone, why are you not going in? Did put that in the list, right? Smooth stone. Mount 64. Yes. Actually, you know what? This is probably a stack. Maybe. If I place you down, what does that do? Nothing. Okay. Well, I'll figure that out. It doesn't really matter. Um, I'm now able to at least get the uh, chiseled stone, which I have quite a bit of in my uh, storage system. I'm not actually sure how much. Probably... Eight stacks, uh, not great, but we'll get more of that. Um, so now we can actually get back to building. Actually, you know what I did? I linked it to the wrong network. So let's place this back down. And before I do anything, we'll place the filter back in as well. So stack and stack. And I need to bind it to the output. I had bound it to the input line, so that goes to storage. So basically I just took whatever was in the spruce chest here. So let's take from this line here, oh, yep, there we go. So I now have a stack of stone, and once that's done, I'll have a stack of smooth stone as well, or chiseled stone, and that should now work. Um, I did find out the bottom set here is actually probably what I want to do as well. Um, well, no, I want it in here. The bottom is your uh, hot bar, so the top is your inventory or your uh, equipment, uh, bottom is the hot bar. So with this, if I place this here, actually let me throw that back in. Don't need you, don't need you, don't need you. I'll put you in storage. Um, so if I put this on my hot bar now, it'll automatically start filling. Uh, let's place this in our hot bar as well. That way it'll just keep a stack in there. Now I can actually keep building. So making a little bit of progress here. Um, let's go ahead over here. Yeah, basically just have three of the circles at least outlined here. Then there'll be the walls there. And then I can start on the actual building itself. Well, it's not quite a creative mode here. But, uh, you know, it's just about pretty close, actually. Um, so this is kind of the general outline of this building. It's going to be, like I said, a kind of greenhouse uh, botany area. Uh, mostly I'll be using it for tree farms. Uh, probably like oak over here, and uh, I'll need definitely a farm for the uh, circuit tree, because uh, I need that for the living wood 
what are they called? Living wood funnels. They're not living wood hoppers. They're basically a hopper, but I'll be needing those. So I want to farm that at least a little bit, have it automated so I'd never have to worry about it again. Um, yep. Drop down to zero frames a second. Huh. Odd. We'll be right back. Well, it's not quite creative mode, but honestly, it's pretty close. Um, so, made a bit of progress here. We've got, uh, let's see, my different wings here. They're going to each be for the various uh, tree farms, probably circuitry and oak and a couple others. haven't decided what all I want to farm yet. I do need at least circuitry for the uh, living wood funnels. Um, since I've got that automatically crafting, I suppose I should probably have it automatically being farmed as well. Uh, this is kind of the general idea I'm going for. I'm going to have these circles on the end here with a, kind of a spherical dome over this. Uh, this hallway is going to be, I haven't decided if it's going to be this style of arch, where it's more rounded, or uh, I could also do something a little along the lines of like up two, and then diagonal, diagonal, and diagonal. So it'd be uh, more of kind of an angle type thing. Um, I actually want that up one more if I were to do that. So I could do, let's go ahead. Something like that. Um, so it'd be more of a uh, line there instead of like this where it's more of a rounded. Um, I, could dig I could go either way. Um, I might go with a rounded, I think. I was thinking with this style, I could run, I'd be using this block, of course. Um, with this, I can run kind of a parallel lines like that and have the horizontal lines. As opposed to with this, it'd be mostly just an arch of probably only a couple arches actually with the block. Um, and then the rest would be the glass, or yeah, the elf glass is what I'm using. Um, this is going to be a you know a, a greenhouse style building, so it's going to be predominantly elf glass here. Uh, lots of green, lots of grass, lots of everything. Um, I haven't decided if I'm going to keep this as a border. I probably will. I kind of like it. Um, and then of course in the middle here is going to be my giant tree. Uh, this is the start of my tree. Isn't it lovely? Um, yeah. So that is kind of the idea I'm going for. I'm going to be kind of building this off camera a little bit. Um, I do need to set up probably these uh, polished corrosive stone as well as the elf glass to be automatically crafted. Uh, that way I can pretty much just build this all in one go actually. Um, but I think that's going to have to call it for today. Um, this is actually coming out day late. I was hoping to get it out on Monday, but that didn't quite work. Um, ran out of time really. <laughs> but Anyway, uh, I hope you enjoyed. If you have any questions, comments, concerns, uh, if you like what I'm doing here, let me know. Um, whoop. Looks like we froze up for just a second. We'll be right back. So, yeah, that's kind of the idea. Um, I do have kind of one question if you, for you guys. Um, I've got this style over here where I've got pillars are on the corners. That's what these uh, three over here are doing. Pillars are just in the centers of the circles, as opposed to over here, where it's more of, and there'd be a pillar here, of course. Um, this way, where I've got basically a flat wall of glass there instead. Instead of the pillar in the middle, I've got pillars on the sides. Uh, again, I can go either way on that. Um, let me know what you guys think. Uh, for now, I hope you enjoyed watching. Thank you. Bye-bye.